Yes. Felicia, you look beautiful. Oh, thank you. I'm going to sing that song. Oh, you are? Yeah. yeah. But I'm going to do it with the music to it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a groupie. So <laughs> I made this up, y'all. This I made it up myself. <laughs> I praise the guy's like, oh. You wrote this? Uh, it's amazing. I took the words from Amazing Grace and Were You There and mushed them together. Wow. Great. That's <laughs> awesome. I can't wait. So this is an original arrangement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited. Nice. Meshed us. Is this the world premiere or <laughs> have you? The uh, with, uh, uh, well, with the music, it is. We yeah, Landmark day, y'all. Landmark day. You get to say, I was there. I was there when she <laughs> <laughs> Were you there? Yes, I was. <laughs>
I don't do line. sick very well. I don't do sick very well. I oh. <laughs> Most people don't. Yeah, me and God had some conversations. <laughs> I'm glad he's forgiving. <laughs> he's like, I love you, Dolores. Yeah. Calm <laughs> oh, down. No. Now you got some good old antibodies. dry because of the time of the year. That won't catch fire, will it? No. No. And we have a, we have a dead tree right next to us. Like, oh, wow. But this is not California, so <laughs> we can get to it. Yeah, you still have to be careful. Yeah. We had a fire hose, a uh, hydrant. Yeah, there's official no fire. them up into a pile, you know, and that's how they get rid of them instead of paying, you know, to have it hauled off. Yeah, that should be against the law. That is against the law. I thought it was here. Yeah. Well, we're, well, we're in be, unincorporated. We can do whatever we want. St. Charles, they do whatever they want. Yeah. We're unincorporated, too. St. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, you we're unincorporated, but they still have their, their rules. <laughs> Believe me. But the county yeah. comes with it. We have no rules. No, you city's not gonna let you do it. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't even know what that means. In St. Peter's, we're just nobody here. Un unincorporated nobodies. Yeah, all the roads around where you live, it's just all they just go wherever. There's no driving. It's so true. I'm always so confused. Oh, I don't even know. The woods. <laughs> hey, sure you guys look so good. Yeah, will you highlight me so I can see something? Well, actually, gang, we're going to need to uh, get started here. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to pass it over to Ronnie. Uh, Ronnie, why don't you go ahead and run us through uh, a welcome and uh, some etiquette? Sweet. Well, like Bill said, <laughs> welcome um, to, to Zoom service. Hope you guys had a great time at your house churches last week. Um, but it's good to be back on Zoom and together this week. Uh, you guys know the deal, but just a little reminder, keep yourself on mute. And if you can, turn your video on 
unless there's something that you really don't want the whole YouTube to see and us to see. Um, but other than that, love you guys. So grateful to um, be together this morning. I'm going to pass it over to Jeff, and he's going to pray for us before we get into everything. Well, good morning, everybody. <laughs> it's good to be together. I'm going to go ahead and pray for service. Father in heaven, it's good to be together. Is you know, no matter how we come together, whether that's via Zoom, whether that's you know in person or however we can come together, it's always good to be together with one another and in doing so being together with you. I pray that our time together is encouraging to all who are able to listen or watch or you know, whatever you call somebody who's listening and watching via Zoom, you know, I guess you get like a special distinction. But I pray that you are with us and that and in listening to your word and listening to the worship and like being together that show power together with your holy people and help us to grasp how wide and long and how deep is the love of Christ. I pray that this can continue and be with us throughout the rest of the week and throughout the rest of our days. In Christ I pray. Amen. Amen. in action. I forgot to say in Zoom etiquette, embrace the chaos. That's our other rule, right? <laughs> yes. I was about to get my jam on too. <laughs> and then we lost it. <laughs> So did we lose Hadrian completely? It's looking like it the looks uh, like it. Worship has disappeared. Should be back soon. In the meantime, I guess we go and just keep looking at me. Since you're highlighted, Jeff, go ahead and sing for us. You know, I'm all about encouragement. And I don't know <laughs> if I'm encouraging you know, Dan, get your drums out. <laughs> oh, there we go.
All right, gang. Hey, let's uh, let's do this. Uh, we have a number of things that are going on. Uh, we have really kind of one of the one of the most adjusted um, seasons coming up uh, here in the fall. So why don't we do this? Let's just move on to our announcements. And so, Kathy, Tim, why don't we go ahead and set you guys up uh, to kind of walk us through some of the things that are going to be coming up. Uh, and uh, as a congregation, let's just kind of embrace the, the <laughs> chaos. Uh, we had a feeling going into today that today would be a, one of those just need to be flexible kind of days. So thanks for your patience, but uh, we have a lot of exciting things to talk about. So let's go ahead and go to announcements. And then after the announcements, Hadrian, if we're still not able to do the worship, let's, uh, let's just go into the sermon. And then, uh, and then we'll take up an offering and then we'll, or we'll do communion, take up an offering, and then we'll just kind of go a little bit, a uh, little bit from the hip here. All right. So Kathy, why don't you take it away? Sure. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Mission Sunday. Um, I think I'm not muted. We're good to go. Someone give me a thumbs up. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so if you want to follow along on the announcements this morning, they are in the church app and also in the description of the YouTube video. Uh, so uh, Mission Sunday is today. Woo! And I'm sure we'll have an update later as far as how much has been collected, but I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody that's already given at this time, and to those of you who will be giving today. Um, yeah, if you, in case you haven't been, you've been under a rock for the last month or so, the Stronger Virtual Conference is coming up uh, this coming Saturday, and uh, you can register today at stronger2020.live, 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 stronger2020.live. Early registration ends today. If you register tomorrow, you might be a little sad because it will be $15 tomorrow. So register today, stronger2020.live. And uh, our own Bill Molden is going to be a keynote speaker for that. Tim Schmidt is doing worship for that. And Melissa Abelio from Columbia, Columbia is doing one of the breakout sessions. So Heartland is well represented, but you got to get registered today. Following Stronger, the next day, we have Trunk or Treat with the Woodson Terrace community, which is going to be awesome. That's going to take place from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. We do need volunteers for that. Um, you can go to trunk.gatewaycitychurch.info, trunk.gatewaycitychurch.info. And uh, we need people who are willing to decorate trunks for their drive through display. And we also need about 10 to 15 individuals to help us tomorrow night with bagging candy. Um, so that'll take place from 7 p.m. till whenever we finish. Uh, so if, uh, if you can come, please go sign up, trunk.gatewaycitychurch.info, and we'll get that knocked out. It's going to be amazing. We're doing a contactless trunk or treat this year. Uh, after that, uh, on Wednesday, October 28th, we have our Women's Midweek, and that'll be back on Zoom. Uh, the link for that can be found in the calendar. And then uh, the following week, we have our Virtual Soup Night and Congregational Devotional. That'll be at, on Friday, November 6th at 6.30 p.m. Um, unfortunately, we can't gather in person, so we're going to be eating soup together online back on Zoom. The link for that will be sent out later. Uh, there will be some worship time, but, there, but that evening we will also have our annual church business meeting. And to discuss the details of that, I'm going to turn it over now to Tim Spencer. Thank you, Kathy. I appreciate it. Uh, good morning, everyone. So for a few years, the Gateway City Board, uh, Gateway City Church Board of Directors has realized a need to revise our bylaws. The bylaws are basically a, a set of guidelines for our membership, uh, rules for business and finance, uh, financial actions, and define the roles and responsibilities of the board, our elders, and the ministry leadership. So the board, uh, working with Vince and our elders, recently completed a revision of our bylaws. We reviewed uh, several bylaws from our sister churches from around the country and then we also worked to ensure we followed the Missouri requir requirements uh, per our organizational status. 
So the board has voted to adopt all of the revisions. And the next step is to give you, our membership, uh, the opportunity to review the bylaws and then pass a ratification vote. So I am going to share my screen, I believe. So hopefully uh, you, are you seeing my share screen? Okay, thank you. So here are the steps that uh, uh, we'll follow. So the revised bylaws, uh, they are currently posted for our members to review in the membership portal of the Gateway City Church website. Yeah, you see there on my, uh, on my PowerPoint, the, the website, gatewaycitychurch.com slash resources slash four dash members. The password will be emailed and texted uh, to the members this afternoon. So then also uh, posted on the first page of the document are contact names in case you have questions. Feel free to reach out to anyone on this list with questions or concerns. The revised bylaws will be available for your review until November the 6th, which that night, as Kathy said, is our congregation uh, devotional. And, uh, and as she said, we'll have some worship time, some fellowship time, and then we'll have a short business meeting. So in the business meeting, uh, we'll cover a few things. One, we will cover the financial overview and financial health of Gateway City Church. We'll also look at a high level description of the bylaws. We'll take an overview of the future of the board of directors. And then at the end, uh, each of our members will have an opportunity to vote on the acceptance of the bylaws through a voting tool on Zoom. All right, so um, I would guess that uh, reviewing bylaws may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I do encourage you to do so based on your interest. But I especially, I especially encourage you to join us on, on November the 6th for our devotional, uh, because, you know, wh whatever happens from that other vote that's going on on November the 3rd, uh, we want to make sure we move forward with your vote of confidence as a unified body of Christ with a new set of bylaws. So that's the announcements for now. So we're either going to go into the songs or we're going to be blessed by uh, Bill's sermon at this point. So we'll see what next step we take. Thanks. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to go right into the sermon unless Hadrian could send me some sort of message in the next two seconds to let me know that the songs are ready. Uh, but Tim, thank you so much for walking us through that. Uh, I'm looking forward to the soup night, even though it is virtual. Uh, I think uh, anytime this group gets together with the purpose of just fellowship and mission and, and uh, building the kingdom, Man, it is just always a good time. And hey, guys, thanks for being so flexible today. Uh, you know, we uh, we always kind of start off with great plans, and then life throws us curveballs. Uh, and uh, especially when you're dealing with a visual medium uh, or a virtual medium, uh, you know, you never know what's going to happen. I really do believe the demons have all moved into electronics. I believe that with all of my heart. Um but, uh, but today, guys, is such a great day because for, for the Gateway City Church, this is some, we're doing something that this church is just amazing at. We're taking up special missions contribution. And the thing that I love about this congregation is that you guys are amazingly generous and amazingly giving. Uh, when Kristen and I moved in, one of the most obvious features of this congregation was the fact that we just couldn't outgive you guys. Uh, as needs came up, uh, the amount of money that was immediately raised to meet them, uh, everything from benevolence to things in Liberia. You remember that one love offering we took up for Liberia and how in less than 24 hours, we tripled the amount that they were asking for. Uh, and do you remember the times that, uh, that people have just brought forth needs over the last year? And just the overwhelming response 
of this congregation to the needs of others is just amazing. You guys are amazingly generous. And I think today uh, we are... Uh, we are just uh, the beneficiaries of something that's already our practice. We know that we're meant to give. And this morning, I really want to talk about a church that is on mission. Because even though we're, we're geared and engineered to give, that doesn't always put us totally in line with what God is doing through the church in this world. We know that uh, we are a church that is going to make disciples of all nations. Missions is an exercise of our belief in that calling. Uh, we give, but I think it's, I, I want to take us a step deeper into the mission and the program of God. I want us to be able to kind of grasp what God is up to in this time with our congregation, what his plan is for us. And I know I'm kind of laying it on thick on what I hope to accomplish, but my goal here is just to remind us that we are the mission. We're not just a part of the mission. We're not just a, a, a thing that contributes to mission. The church is the mission of God. But if I'm going to accomplish any of that, I'm going to need a lot of God's help. So why don't we do this? Let's start off with a prayer. And then we'll dive into the Bible. Let's pray. Father, uh, thank you so much, God, for just this amazing opportunity to just roll with whatever's working for us this day. Uh, God, we know that your spirit really wants to work powerfully in this contribution that we're collecting today. God, we know that the dollars that we give, the, the amount is not what uh what is the ultimate goal it's the heart and saying father we trust you with things that this world just cherishes the most we give our wealth we give our time we give our energy many of us today are are sacrificing uh you know a weeks months days worth of salaries uh we're we're giving to you uh, this offering, wanting you to bless it, wanting you to take the gospel to, to people that we will only meet in heaven because they're over in Eurasia right now. We want you to take this money and go to Liberia and ease the suffering of the church there. God, we want you to take it and help it to uh, allow us to plant churches all over the heartland. God, we recognize that as we give and as it's become our custom to give during this time of the year, God, we recognize that we can't give unless you have empowered us to. And so, God, let the offering today really be a reflection to you of how grateful we are. But also let it be a statement of worship that we are empowering this congregation to make contribution to your ultimate goal of seeing disciples made in every part of the planet. God, thank you so much for this time. Be with me as I preach. God, let it be an encouragement. Let it edify the soul. Uh, God, let it be the exactly what you would want it to be. Father, we are so grateful that uh, you do not judge us as our sins deserve. So be with us as we study. We love you and pray this on your son's name. Amen. Well, gang, I want us to uh, to think for a moment about the the mission of the church. Sounds like we got someone off mute. Uh, so, uh, if you are on joining with us, please mute yourself so we don't get that feedback. Uh, when you think of the mission, when you think of ch the church being on mission. What comes to mind? You know, isn't it just kind of thoughts of people sharing their faith, uh, having Bible studies? Um, you know, the, the, the church 
kind of being in each other's lives and having people over all the time and doing all these sort of things, which right now during the pandemic are kind of hard to do. Uh, you know, uh, I, I love the fact that, uh, you know, we were, uh, we were uh, kind of talking earlier in the fellowship about people doing drive-by ribbing, uh, people dropping off ribs for others who, uh, who are going through COVID right now. We were, uh, we're, we're, you know, we're kind of on a, on a meal train quest. Uh, you know, the, uh, the Hawkins family, of course, is going through a, a trial with uh, Robin's mom. And, uh, you know, they, in two days, they were brought so much food that uh, Vince had to call me and say, bro, please don't bring any food over today. <laughs> we don't have any room. And, we start to we start to realize that's the goal isn't it that there's no more room because of the generosity of the church we just can't fit it into the fridge we just can't fit it into the freezer we just can't fit it in because i'm being given so much and yet uh i think that that's that's why god has always viewed the church as the mission. Because when you come into the church, you recognize that I've been given salvation. I have been given a family. I've been given brothers and sisters, and I've been giving unmerited kindness that I just can't justify. There's nothing in my life that would prove that I deserve any of this type of fellowship and love. And so what's a church to do? Well, God's answer to that is, well, now that you've received freely, now we need to, uh, to freely give. But I want us to think about something for a moment. And this is going to come out of our study in, in Ephesians. Uh, I want us to think about what it means to be on mission and the fact that how does the church relate to the world around us because the church isn't meant to just go into a place or to send people out the church really is designed to be the thing that god uses that heal that heals the world and reconciles people back to himself that the church isn't just entrusted with a message but it's entrusted to become the incarnate person of christ we aren't meant to just primarily proclaim Jesus' work. We're actually meant to show his words, his deeds, and his life in a visible way in every corner of our city. God is a missional God in this sense. He moves into neighborhoods. He incarnates himself into the world. You know, he does this in order to redeem us, in order to establish his kingdom. Think about God's pattern of doing things from the very beginning. He walks in the afternoon with his creation in the garden. He builds or has the, the, the group build a tabernacle to sit right in the midst of the Israelite camp. God allows his people to build a temple so that the entire city would be surrounded by the presence of God. God always wanted to be his people's God, but he didn't just want to want to, want to be their God. He wanted to be with them in their city, in their neighborhood, in their camp, in the garden, which is why it shouldn't have surprised the spiritual realm when God decided to become a man. But in Jesus, we see God's ultimate missional nature. He comes down in the form of Jesus. And so let's think about this for a moment as, uh, as I share my screen here. There we go.
Well, I'm trying to advance my screen and it's not letting me. There we go. The mission of the church is to follow the pattern that God had set by his own, his own example. From the beginning, God wants to be with his people. And with that in mind, he comes in the form of Christ, who then calls men and women to him so that he could do exactly what he's done for the beginning. I want to be with the people. You know, and look at what Paul says in Ephesians. He says in Ephesians 3, uh, 10 and 11, his intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Why does God focus so much on his mission to be with his people? Why has that been the pattern? Why since the garden has God always found ways to say, I am going to walk with my creation? You know, why, why that way? Why not sit high aloft on your throne and rule from a place of power? Why, why bother to come down and be with men because of what he says right here? That through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities of the heavenly realms. Because in Paul's mind, what's at stake isn't just our salvation, that this whole thing, this whole creation, this whole, this whole movement has been to display what real power looks like to those that are that have the title of rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. God is being watched. And God is not being understood. You know, one of the things that we sense from the Gospels is you hear a lot of otherworldly talk coming out of Christ as he's facing the cross, right? You know, as he... As he is being confronted, you know, he makes this amazing statement in the garden, but this is your hour when darkness reigns. We see in Jesus that when he dies on the cross, this the curtain tearing from top to bottom. We 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 kind of get this idea that there is that there is this incredible statement being made not only to the earth as its creation but to all the powers that would be the, to all that all the things that would claim residency and ownership of this planet we see Jesus kind of coming in and making these amazing statements. Remember the temptation in the wilderness at the beginning of his ministry when Satan came down and he offered Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. He said, they belong to me. I can give them to whoever I want. If you'll just bow down to me, I'll give you the very people you came for. You could be with them all the time. All you got to do is compromise and worship me. To which Jesus says, not on your life. And he makes this amazing statement to worship God only. And so what does Satan do? Satan goes, okay, it's on. And through those that he owned and controlled, to those that were persuadable by his dark ideas, we see what happens to God in the flesh. God makes himself vulnerable to be with his creation. And so what does Satan do? He whips them up so that he is killed by his own people, that he's even taunted by his own people, that he is rejected by his own people people so that he could say to God, see, you have no power here. 
See, darkness grossly underestimated the manifold wisdom of God because they couldn't see what he had in mind. Paul would talk about it in, in Ephesus as a mystery that most of the world controlled by Satan was about to switch teams. That through Satan's best device, death, he thought that if I destroy God, that settles the dispute, but in doing so could not have foreseen that that was the very plan that God had in mind. I'll come down and I'll take all the, the weapons of the enemy and I'll let him do his worst to me because by doing his worst to me, he's actually fulfilling the plan of salvation. He was completely fooled. God in his manifold wisdom, God in his brilliant execution allowed Satan to use his own tactics to bring about the salvation of the people of God. And now God goes, I got one better. Instead of making this a cosmic spiritual fight that will that will always be between me and the, the spiritual rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave disciples who are just going to imitate me. Here, here's what's going to happen. All those people they think they control, I'm going to, I'm going to leave them there and right underneath their noses as the church starts to embody Jesus, as the church starts to not only talk, act, but live like Christ, what ends up happening is that right underneath their noses, souls are being claimed back for God. You know, this is why uh, uh, Paul would go on to say in Ephesians 6, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of the heavenly realms. You, you, you get this idea that Paul saw what God was up to, that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God who was going to take on the cosmic forces of darkness by allowing darkness to do its worst, only to let those things become the very thing that would bring salvation to you and me. He goes, now what's happening is that the world is being constantly inundated with darkness, trying to shut the church down, trying to dumb down the disciples. But every time we choose to be like Christ, every time we choose to share our faith, every time we, we choose to take our funds and give it to the purposes of God, something is happening in the spiritual realm that literally is changing everything. So, today is a day that calls us back to missions. Today is a day that we get reminded that we are giving to something greater, more powerful than just Eurasia. <laughs> We're giving to something more eternal and lasting than Liberia. We're doing more than just strengthening and planting churches in the heartland. Today, when we give, we are making a statement to the, to the uh, rulers and authorities, the dark powers of this world, saying, you had your day, you had your moment, but you're not going to hang on to the many people for long because God is with 
us. He is with us as his people. He is in us. We are acting more like him today. We are becoming more powerful today. Anytime someone speaks truth and love into my life with a little bit of grace, come on, let's take it easy on each other. But as he, as we speak truth into our lives and we become like, amen, bro, I'm going to repent. That is awesome. The, the, the powers of darkness go, he's doing it to us again. We thought we had this thing on lockdown, and here they are back on mission. Missions is not the giving of money. (laughs) Missions is a declaration of war to the dark forces of this planet. And we know how it's going to end. Think about how the whole story ends in Revelation. Revelation 21 verse 3 says, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Today, we have sped up that great moment just a little. When we are on mission, and we live with an an intentional mission focus. The manifold wisdom of God that says, I don't need to challenge the forces of darkness with, with the plan and the strategies of darkness. I'll actually just put myself under them, live among them, and then overcome them by the power of the Lamb of God. So today, brothers and sisters, I think just like they underestimated what God was up to in Jesus, I think today those same powers and authorities in the heavenly realms, they underestimate you and me because they have us in a time of crisis and they're probably thinking they can't give as much as they want to, so they might not give it all. To which we say, well, I'm going to give what I can. You know, they're disconnected right now. This is what they're saying. They, they, they can't meet together. The, the, the virus is, is, is coming in and, it's, and, and they, they can't just be the way they normally are. And it's a time of self, selfishness and being self-centered. And yet, uh, as we've shown over and over again, with every drive-by <laughs> food drop, with every phone call, with every extra Zoom meeting, even though we're all on Zoom fatigue, every time we click on YouTube, not to just fill time, but to watch a worship service, we tell that uh, those rulers and those, those powers, you have grossly misunder uh, or underestimated us. We're on mission. You know, we're starting to have impact. People are going to be studying the Bible now more than ever before. We should be getting ready in our Bibles to to be able to share this amazing call of making disciples of all nations to so many who are now going to be open saying, I used to think life was about all of this, but now that this crisis has happened, I don't know what to believe. We are going to claim souls that had been owned by the authorities and powers of this world in the heavenly realms. They may have them for now, but they won't have them for long. Because you and I, we're on mission. Today, let's give so that we make a statement to the heavenly realms. But today, let's love. Because that word of encouragement may just shake the chains of darkness off somebody's soul. Today, let's, let's make plans 
for the future of all the people who are going to want to know what does it mean to really walk with God? And let's be a church that just is ready. Not because we give missions on one Sunday every year, but because we are the mission of God. Brothers and sisters, I hope this ranting has been of some encouragement to you. Uh, but this is something I really believe with all of my heart. We have some forces that are opposed to what we're doing, and that's a good thing. It means we're on mission. But don't let those forces discourage you from doing what Jesus has called us to do. Let's make disciples. Let's love one another. Let's encourage one another as long as it is called today. Today is the day of salvation. Let us be missional. Love you. Hope that was helpful. And now we're going to go to communion. What's going on, everybody? Man, what a great, great message, Bill. I really appreciate what you said. I think everybody, I think in the chat is going off talking about how they appreciate what you said. <laughs> definitely wouldn't call it ranting. I definitely would uh, call that preaching, bro. You know, I get to uh, respond to the message and, you know, talk a little bit about communion and just the scripture that Bill used and the thoughts that he shared really have me kind of going. You know, he looked at Ephesians 3, 10 and 11. His, his intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. And it's cool, man, because he kind of like walked us through how God always wanted to be with us. Like from the very beginning, you know, God was walking in the cool of the day in the garden, you know. God made, you know, had them have the tabernacle so he would be among the people. And then, you know, all throughout, you know, scripture, God wanted to be with his people. And that continues on with us. You know, when you read that scripture after walking us through that and showing us really that the church is the vehicle that God reveals his wisdom and his grace through, you know. And that goes, you know, that's you and me. That's all of us, man. That's really cool. Like missions is just a part of that. You know, it gets to like the plans that we make, the way that we encourage one another, how we go out of our way to meet one another, like how we reach out to people, how we share the gospel with people, how we, you know, love people, pray for people. You know, the church really gets to be like a tool, like the extension of Christ's love. We get to be administers of his grace. And that's just encouraging, man. That's powerful. It really, uh, it gives us mission and vision. Like, that's really encouraging. It's something that you said that really makes me think about the cross too, is that, you know, you said that in Jesus, we see God's missional nature, you know, that it wasn't surprising that, you know, God would come to earth as a man, you know, given that he wants to be with his people and he wants people to feel his love. And, you know, what was the mission that Jesus came for? You know, what was that, what, what was that mission that he came onto earth for? Well, the reason why we, you know, <laughs> break the bread and drink the juice every Sunday is really cool. If you look over, I can read it to you guys. It's Romans 5, 6 is the scripture that came to mind. You know, it says, you see at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We get to a lot of the mission that we have is because Christ gave us the ability to commune with God in spite of our sinful nature. He died for our sins and gave us, you know, the grace that we couldn't possibly repay. And in doing so, we get to be a part of the mission. So as we get ready to look at, as we get ready to take communion with, together, you know, via uh, Zoom, we're going to, uh, I'll get ready to pray for us. But I uh, want to do, I want to also say that we have a special treat during communion. We'll be listening to a original song by Felicia Rogers. She'll uh, be able to uh, guide us into communion and really set the mood. So I'll pray for us and we'll uh, take communion together. Father in heaven, I just want to thank you for this time. Thank you for your mission. I thank you for being a part of your church. You know, it's, we, all, we all ultimately want to have purpose. And knowing that you, that 
you allow for the church to be a vehicle to not only reveal your wisdom, but to reveal your grace. It's just empowering. It's it's cool to know that, you know, you're a part of something much bigger than yourself. It's cool to know that, you know, like the world being saved isn't just on you, but it rests on your power that <laughs> we get to take part of. As we think about communion, and I pray that we're grateful for Jesus and your missional nature, how you have steadily come after humanity from the beginning of time. And I pray that we can, you know, chase after you even a fraction as much. It's in Christ I pray. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. We know these words just put you a special arrangement. Let's go ahead and get started. Just clap your hands and we all can relate to these words. God is good. We're going to pause that for a minute there. We're going to pause that for a minute there. Sorry about that. All righty. We're not doing this this morning. We're going to get this. This Bluetooth been acting right all morning, but now we... Um, We gonna go with it. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and acapella this for y'all. That's all right. Praise God anyway. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost and now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. It was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved me. Amazing in grace, how sweet the sound that saved me. Were you there when he prayed in Gethsemane? Where he cried blood and tears? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Where he died for you and me? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb to only rise again? But we have no less days to sing God's praise than when we first believed. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved me. Amazing in grace, how sweet the sound that saved me, saved me. How sweet the sound, how sweet the sound, how sweet the sound. How sweet the sound, how sweet the sound, how sweet the sound. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Amazing. 
saving grace, how sweet the sound that saved me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved me. Thank you. Well, good morning, church. Thank you, Felicia. And uh, for those of you that don't know, that is incredibly difficult to uh, basically sing um, a cappella like that. So, Felicia, thank you for giving your heart. You obviously are amazingly talented, but more than anything, you're just an incre incredible woman of God. Everything's been awesome. This has been very encouraging. Uh, thank you for all of your prayers for my wife, Robin. Um, you know, so we're in that place right now of comfort, comfort, support for my mother-in-law. And so, uh, but thank you for your prayers. <laughs> thank you for your gifts of meals that Bill talked about during his sermon. Bill, thank you for the message. Man, I'm excited to be a part of God's mission. I uh, appreciate that perspective. Uh, thank you for the communion. I'm just going to give a few thoughts here uh, as we kind of take up our offering. Uh, I did want to let you know, as of today, uh, we have collected $91,000 as a church. And so uh, that's very uh, encouraging, uh, very inspiring. Uh, we're almost there. And uh, so we'll collect dollars today and we'll collect dollars next Sunday. And then uh, next week, we will officially end Special Missions 2020. Does that make sense? So next Sunday will be kind of the end of Special Missions. Very special, short mission season. Uh, but uh, for those of you that are given, uh, praise God. I just want to share a quick story. Well, actually, a, a, a verse and then a story. And uh, this is Paul in Philippians chapter 4 verse 17. And, um, you know, this is Paul as he's kind of thanking the church for their gift. And of course, Paul, you might say, represents uh, a missionary, right? Uh, he was sent by God. He was a missionary to the Gentiles, uh, which is us, by the way. We are the Gentiles. So you know, that's why his letter keeps preaching today to us. All of those letters, they keep, um, they're to us, they're to what we're dealing with in our current situation. Uh, but he's thanking the church for supporting him and supporting the work of missions. In verse 17, he says, as he talks about the gift and thanks him, he says, it's not that I'm looking for a gift. He says, but I am looking for what may be credited to your account. It's a very interesting, you know, way of putting things, right? You, well, you can, if you're cynical, you can say, oh, yeah, well, Paul, yeah, you want everyone to give. And then you say they're going to get something in return. But I think those of us that are Christians, we understand this well, that, that we actually are building an account. We understand this, uh, you know, I'm over 50 now, and so I have a retirement account, something that I never thought about, and probably until I was in my 40s. Uh, so, you know, I, and money going into my retirement account so that I'm not the 80-year-old guy in the pulpit. You guys are going, please don't let Vince preach anymore. Stop him. You know what I mean? Please, you know, you don't want that. Uh, but, but I think about, you know, kind of storing up. And I think that you can imagine that we have this account, you know what I mean? And that everything we give, you know, it goes into that account. And I think, you know, that's what Paul says. I, it's not that I need a gift, but I'm looking for ways for you to invest in your account. You're storing up, right? We know that to be true. You're storing up treasures in heaven. But whatever you give, God not only matches it, right? But you, I don't know. He, he matches it ten, uh, tenfold over, a hundredfold over. I know, I know that we all have in store for us something greater than anything that we can give here on earth. And so I just remind us of that, uh, those words of Paul at this moment, that whatever we're giving during our offering, it might be easy for us sometimes to think, well, let's go in the Liberia, it's going to meet a need. Or it's going to Eurasian missions, or it's going to the heartland. Or, But more than anything else, more than those specific places receiving a gift from us, that everything we give, 
is actually going, it's actually going into our account. But it's not going to look the same. You know, it won't be the $10 you gave or the $100 you gave or the $1,000 you gave or the $10,000 you gave. It'll look so much different. When it, it will be, it will be just multiplied in ways. You'll be like, I gave that? I share a quick story with you. When I was in Columbia, Missouri, I played basketball with a group of guys and, and uh, engineers and professors and different people and became good friends. And, uh, you know, we, we have a very, uh, very close relationship. And so I go back to Columbia occasion. They always want me to come back and we'll get lunch. We, we can't play ball now. So I got to get lunch with one of the engineering professors and he sent me a message prior. He said, hey, I got this car that his two sons drove. And it was uh, it was an Explorer, Ford Explorer. And uh, it's a little bit older model and only had 134,000 miles on it. But it's in pretty good shape. He says, hey, I, I want to I give it to someone. Can I give it to the church, Vince? And you can just find someone to give it to. Well, it just happened to be a sister in Columbia who had been joining. If you've been on our Tuesday morning quiet times, you've met Shawanda Campbell. And uh, Shawanda is joining our quiet times. And every Sunday morning, we should, every Tuesday, she joins our quiet times. She actually puts her, 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 her video, uh, it's not on, because she's riding on a bus listening to our quiet time until she gets to her office. And so when he said he had this gift, he's in Columbia, who can you give it to? The first person came to mind is that, oh, this would be great for Shawanda. Anyway, I said, hey, we want to pay you. He goes, I don't want any money. I don't want any money. <laughs> you know, I said, well, can we, I don't want any dollars. I don't want anything. He just wanted to give it as a gift. And uh, I told him I would share this story. Uh, he doesn't visit our churches or anything like that, but um, I just think about the heart just to give, right? I think I love that heart, and I love that he's not doing it in his mind so that he would get anything. But I think even those that maybe are not faithful to God, I think they're storing up for themselves something greater as well. So I really would say that no matter where you're at, whether you're doing well spiritually, if you're not doing well spiritually, maybe you're not even a member of our church, I will say this. I know that there is great power and gift, and the blessing that others get as a result of it is something truly remarkable. But I know as disciples that you are storing up for yourself an incredible treasure in heaven. So with that, let's go to God in prayer. As Bill said, hopefully that inspires you. It was a bit of ranting, but uh, but hopefully you're inspired. But I just want to say to everyone that's given so far, praise God, $91,000. I'm sure we will blow out the 100 k go beyond it. So let's pray. God, we love you so much, and uh, we thank you for the opportunity to give. And uh, we are blessed, God. We have been given so much. And I think, God, just um, there are examples, Father, in all of our lives of the incredible excess that we have. And, Father, that, um, but, God, we don't want to just give out of our excess, God. We really do want to be people that we practice sacrifice. So, God, I pray that we can get in the spirit, Father, of sort of giving sacrificially. Uh, God, because you're a God that has such great plans for your mission. And Father, the work's going to get done regardless, God, of course, because you are a missional God. You are intentional. Father, you didn't need our permission to come to earth in the form of a man to show how much you love humanity. And Father, you didn't need us, God, those of us alive today, God, necessarily to do what you've done through the ages. But God, the opportunity we get to participate in your mission, it really is pretty miraculous. And we thank you for that. But God, we also thank you that everything we give, as Paul says, it's not really about what we give to you, God, but it is what actually gets accredited to our account. I pray that we will see it that way, God. And Father, that all of our giving, Father, not just the Mission Sunday, but God, whatever we do, Father, whether we have, I don't know, maybe we're blessed to have a car to give away or we have other things to give away, Father, anything we give, God, may we give it with generous hearts. Uh, Father, not necessarily expecting an immediate return, but Father, knowing that 
we are building your kingdom. And Father, we also, in addition to that, we get to store up treasure in heaven. We are really among the most blessed to be living at this time. We need you. We love you. We thank you for the opportunity to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, this concludes our service today. Uh, hopefully you had a very uh, unique, I'd say, <laughs> authentic experience with us today. <laughs> and uh, we will be back together next week on Zoom. There will be no glitches. There'll be no issues. <laughs> and then in the month of November, we will kind of, uh, we will update you on how we will meet uh, starting in, in November. Uh, this concludes our worship today. We just, uh, we're, if you stick around, there'll be some time for breakout room and fellowship where you can talk about the sermon and get some laughs or whatever. Um, anyway, we want to dismiss you all. Pray that God will bless you. May God's blessing be upon you all. May God strengthen you and keep you and your families. And uh, until we see you again, bye-bye. can. Bill, you want to do that real quick? Yes, let's do it.